Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about another factor that can actually increase cardiac output. And that's something called the Frank Starling mechanism. And this is just a name that's attributed to the two people that were involved in the research on this mechanism. And so let's go ahead and talk about it. So the myocardial wall, that is the muscle of the heart, particularly of the ventricles is normally what we're considering, has two important properties during systole. Remember, systole is when we're in the contraction phase. Those two important properties are one, obviously the contraction itself. If the heart didn't contract, then there would be no blood moving and we wouldn't be alive, so this is obvious. But the one that's not so obvious is the elasticity. So when you have the chambers of the heart, let's say the ventricle, if you were to add more blood to it than normal, so more blood was to return to the ventricle, then the walls would actually stretch. It's like if you have a balloon and you fill it up with water. The more water you add, the more the balloon extends outward, right? So it has extensibility. But something unique to the heart is that it can actually recoil back like a rubber band. So it doesn't just extend out, it's like a rubber band. If you pull the rubber band out, what happens if you let go? It has elastic recoil and snaps back. And so the myocardial wall has elasticity. So why is this important? Well, this is important whenever more blood is returned to the heart. This is something that's common during exercise or a fight or flight response. So, when more blood is returned to the heart, and this would be the case if you were during exercise or it were a fight or flight response, then you have what's called an increased preload, which we defined in the previous video. And when you have more blood returning to the heart, that is the ventricles, then the ventricular walls are stretched more than in the case when less blood is returned. And that hopefully makes sense. If you return more blood into the ventricles, then there's a higher volume of blood in the ventricles and their walls stretch, kind of like a balloon. But, as I mentioned, the myocardial walls are elastic and they have a recoil property. So you can stretch them, but they're going to bounce right back. Okay? And if you think about it, that bouncing back could sort of be like a contraction almost. It's not a contraction, but it's going to have the same effect as a contraction. And so in addition to the contraction of the ventricles itself, that is the contraction due only to the cardiomyocytes, the contraction force is greater with that increased preload, that increased volume in the ventricles, because the stretched ventricular walls recoil back to their resting position with greater force. The more you stretch those myocardial walls, the stronger they're going to recoil back. And that recoil back is going to push blood through the aorta, if we're on the left side of the heart, with more force than just the contraction by itself. And this greater force of contraction, which means a greater stroke volume, this phenomenon is called the Frank Starling mechanism. And it's increased stroke volume due to increased stretch of the ventricular wall and increased elastic recoil. And so I put this graph here to hopefully make this make a little more sense. This bar right here, this is representing contraction only. So we have absolutely no elastic recoil of the heart wall. So this is only due to the contraction of the cardiomyocytes. However, if I were to add on top of that, the elastic recoil due to the increased preload and incre increased ventricular stretch, we would actually see an overall greater contraction force. And so contraction plus elastic recoil gives you a greater contraction force than just the contraction by itself. Okay, and so you end up with a higher stroke volume. In fact, I could probably just simply, instead of saying contraction force, I probably ought to have said stroke volume right here. Okay, but in any case, higher stroke volume when you have more elastic recoil, and you get more elastic recoil when you have a higher preload, more blood returning to the heart, more stretch of the ventricular walls, and more elastic recoil. That is the Frank Starling mechanism. Okay, um, I also put this here just because good information. We also talked about afterload in the previous video. Afterload is bad. Preload is good. Afterload is bad. What you'll notice here with any kind of afterload, whether it's just resistance against which the heart has to pump, 
the heart is not going to be able to generate as much force because it's having to pump against higher pressure, such as high blood pressure in the arteries, aortic stenosis, which is hardening of the aorta, in which case it's lost compliance, all sorts of bad stuff. You don't want afterload. But preload is good. Bottom line here, Frank Starling mechanism is applicable anytime you have increased blood return back to the heart. Again, major things where that occurs, exercise and fight or flight. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.